very many forests have been said to be haunted with spirits and curses from all over the world. One such forest area has its legends of a certain damnation in between the Lancaster and Lebanon area, which is State Game Lands 145. A hunter cursed to hunt forever with his hounds as punishments for his terrible deeds haunts these game lands. See, in German cultures, there is a legend called the Wild Hunt that comes from pagan roots, featuring what is called the Eva Gejäger, or pronounced as Eva Gejäha, as I'm told by a local Amish man. In most cases, it's a hunter who chooses to hunt for all eternity to provide fruitfulness to the harvest of its once community. Jacob Brewster is one of the versions of the legend where he boasted that he could ride his horse and dogs to New York in three days at 12 miles an hour. But then his fortune forsook him when a group of Native Americans pursued him and eventually killing him, resulting in his spirit unceasingly hunting for all eternity. But that's a story for another video. In this case, this is the part of the legend where the huntsman is punished for all his bad behavior. In the book Legends of the Hounds, written by George Henry Boker in 1867, tells about a hard-hearted furnace master which is called the Squire in the 1800s when furnaces were all over Lancaster County due to its abundance of resources and one of the well-known furnaces ran by the Squire. That would be the Colebrook Furnace, which unfortunately is not standing today, and was dismantled in 1858. In this poem, it tells of how poorly he treats his workers and his dogs while owning the Colebrook Furnace and drinking very heavily. His hounds were his prized possessions, as he would often praise how great his dogs were at hunting. One dog in particular was his favorite named Flora and didn't see his ferocity like he did with the other hounds because she was his best hunter and she was the most loyal. As it says in the book of her behavior, Flora, a leader of his pack, followed a shadow in his track, followed despite his hits and blows, paused when he paused, rose when he rose. The book even tells of a very stormy winter where Flora even strayed out in the cold to save her master's life. The squire that day was out and was drinking his favorite alcohol, finding himself deep in the woods and passing out from the intoxication in the snow. Flora found him and barked and continued to bark until he woke up. She then showed him to shelter and out of the elements of winter, saving his life. One fateful day, the squire's group of friends came up from Philadelphia to indulge in a hunt in the game lands. The squire would tell his friends on how great his hounds were of hunting and said their day would be filled with successful hunting and sport. But unfortunately that day, the hounds failed to get anything, embarrassing the squire after boasting about them. With fury ensuing the squire, he let out a yell to his hunting pack. I'll show these town bred gentlemen if my dogs cannot hunt so well on earth, another in hell. With a drunken rage, the squire took his dogs to his furnace and ordered all his workers with force to throw the dogs into the furnace while molten hot. Even his favorite hound Flora had her life ended that day to the fiery depths of the furnace. Once the rage left the squire's body, he realized what he had done and his body filled with grief. For months, his dogs haunted his thoughts and he even had instances where he thought he heard them following him. His workers even saw him pet an invisible hound while sitting near the furnace. And eventually his body could not take the guilt and stress of the bad deed he had done. The book reads, Once, twice, thrice around the room he fled, then in the nurse's arms fell dead. From those deeds and especially the action he took on his dogs led him to a damnation fit for him. The legend of the area is that he haunts the game lands to hunt for eternity as the Eva Gejäger, or the eternal hunter in German Dutch lore. Lots of Germans early in Pennsylvania's time settled here, so it's most likely where the legend persisted.
So who is the Squire? Well, the Squire is actually based on a real person. The Colebrook Furnace was built in 1791 by a Robert Coleman and was later given to his son, Thomas Coleman. At the time, it was common practice to hire a man with more technical skills to run the furnace and oversee the production. Well, who did Robert Coleman hire? He ended up hiring a man by the name of Samuel Jacobs, who was known for his great making of iron, but not only that, but his drinking, cruelty to workers and others, and you guessed it, his hunting hounds. During his time running the furnace, his word was the law, and his workers feared him, for if there was any transgression, they would be fired. Even his servant girls were suspect to unwanted advances, and he was only ever to show niceness to his hunting hounds at rare times. Whether or not the specific event that happens in the poem actually happened in real life is unknown. There are no records of how Samuel Jacobs died, so it is up in the air. Now, with the book with the poem, it is rumored that the surviving family of Squire Jacobs bought and burned all the original copies of the book. In the later editions of the book, the area is changed from the U.S. to over in England, and this was possibly to hide the identity of the Squire. But if you do find yourself in the state game lands of 145, it is said that if you find yourself in the woods at any time, you may hear the howls of a pack of hunting dogs, along with demanding commands of their master, hunting for miles upon miles. And if you're lucky, or most would call unlucky, you'll get a glimpse of the hunters.